Hey there, YouTubers, TFW members. This is Optimus Prowl slash BHK Unknown coming at you again with another video review, this time of Generations Warpath. Now, Generations Warpath right here is a nice little red tank. He's a classics version of the uh, old G1 tank that was a mini bot, I believe. And he's a nice deep red, nice maroon red. Um, really like him a lot. He's actually a really cool figure. I don't know if the price I paid for him was necessarily worth it, but we'll let you guys figure that out as I go through the review. Now, obviously, as you can see, I was turning his tank turret. Um, as a tank, he's got a 360 degree spinning turret. You can go up and down, up and down. And then he's even got these little posable missile racks up here on the sides of the tank turret. And he rolls, um, but just on little wheels down here on the bottom. Not really any of these tank treads. These are just silver painted, um, which brings me to the paint. We got black here, nice Kapow label right there, um, Autobot symbol, Zowie, or Z O W 333, and then another Autobot symbol. Um, he's got some gray plastic, some silver bits here on the inside, whoop, and some silver on the bottom on the tank treads. Uh, other than that, that's it for vehicle mode. Just a nice little red tank, and I figure, and I found that if you look at the original version, he doesn't have these. He doesn't have these uh, things, and he's also not an H tank. But if you want to make him look a little bit more like the original, I like bending these all the way down, and it gives him a nice little compact look to the tank. Um, puts these down on the sides a little bit, which could be a little bit um, too low for some, but I like the way they look. So, anyway, let's get on to the transformation. So, transformation is as follows. Um, flip these back up and flip these all the way up to the top. That way they're all the way up just like that. And then you're gonna come back, no, you're gonna come up here. Come up here to the arm sections on the back, flip open these little tamp, these panels, and then flip the arms up. Flip the arms up, sometimes they can get a little stuck on the little pegs here that peg into the gray bit right there. Um, they can get a little stuck on that, and then Flip out the hands, like that, and then close these back up. So flip out the hands, and close it back up. And then you're going to pull off this entire front piece right here, so that this detaches from the legs, and then just pull it up, and then you're going to rotate the waist up like that, then separate the legs, and pull out the feet a little bit. You're going to separate them from the sides here, so out a little bit fold them down, and then rotate them in, and then you're just going to rotate them up until they snap. Like that. They don't snap in all the way on mine, but eh, it still leaves them pretty good. And do the same thing on the other side. Pop that out, pop that in, slip it in. There we go. Alright, and that's all done on the legs. So then you come up to here, and this is probably the coolest part of the transformation, one of the coolest bits. It makes him a nice big blocky transformer. So you fold this gray bit down, and you fold this down, and then you fold this all the way down, and it finally snaps into place just like that. So it makes a nice big block of a torso in here. Really cool looking. Now you're probably all wondering, where is his head? I don't see him. I don't see its head. How come he's still got this big giant turret on his chest? Well, that's probably one of the best part of the transformation. So you take this turret, and you push it in, like this, and... Just like that, his head pops up. And I like to pull out the turret just a little tiny bit to give it a little extra length. And it's Warpath in robot mode. There he is. Uh, Warpath is pretty, pretty posable. Um, he doesn't have a ball jointed head. Really wish he did. If he did, he would be just that much better. Um, because of the hinge it's on for transformation, he can look down, kind of. But it looks a little odd because of the way the hinge works. He can also look up, kind of. But it looks odd because of the way the hinge works again. But he's got a full rotation on the head. Um, he's got shoulder rotation up here. He's got it in and out at the shoulder. He also has a bicep swivel there. Um, bends at the elbow 90 degrees. His hands can bend up this way, but they can't rotate at all, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, he has no waist articulation because of the way his chest and everything transforms. I think they could have put it in. They could have engineered that in with just cutting this part and putting a cut joint in there and having a swivel spot right there, they probably could have engineered it in, but I can see why they didn't for stability's sake. He's got ball jointed hips, they move all over the place. He's got 
uh, thigh swivel with the ball joint hips, and he's got a nice 90 degree bend in his knee, and then no real foot articulation. They can move forward a little bit, but only because of transformation. Not really side to side or um, anything like that. So that's pretty much his articulation model. Um, size comparison wise, here's um, Classics Hound, or Universe 2.0 Hound, and they're about the same height. Um, not too much bigger. He's about the same height as Hound. Maybe a little taller at the head. Just a bit. Tiny bit from here all the way over to there. Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, otherwise, he's a pretty neat figure. Let's get Hound out of there. And uh, I really like Generations Warpath. I paid $20 for Warpath. Um, I don't know if he's worth quite that much. His articulation is still... It's a little tiny bit outdated compared to some other new, newer figures we've gotten. It's still really, really good. Don't get me wrong. This is still really, really good articulation. I mean, he's got these awesome elbow bends that just bend all the way up and everything. Um, I just really wish he'd had a ball jointed head and a waist swivel. If he had had those two things, that would have made him thumbs up amazing. But he doesn't have those. So... It kind of takes his points down for me a little bit, and I don't think he was worth the $20 that I paid. Had I seen him in Toys R Us about a month later after that, and it saved my money and waited until then, I would have picked him up for $12. Definitely would pick this guy up for the normal retail price of either $12 to $13. Definitely. I would recommend this guy if you can find him in a store. But if he's at a comic book shop and he's $20 uh, or anything higher than that, I would say no. You can probably skip him. He wasn't a super huge character in the G1 series, and... I mean, he already got a really awesome done version of in Universe 2.0 as a Minibot Legends toy. So, this guy is really, really good, though. So, if you can find him at retail, definitely pick him up. Otherwise, that's Optimus Prowl. That was Warpath, and I am signing out. Thank you very much for watching.